Good day to you, my dear brothers and sisters. May the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you always. This is Father Ron Sandoval, SVD, Chaplain of the Philippine Chagotas Dins Gemeinde here in Vienna, Austria. I welcome you all to this moment with Jesus, the Word of God. Today is December 18, Friday of the third week of Advent. Samahan niyo po ako sa ating pakikinig at pagninilay sa Salita ng Diyos. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, when I will raise up a righteous shoot to David. As king, he shall reign and govern wisely. He shall do what is just and right in the land. In his days, Judah shall be saved. Israel shall dwell in security. This is the name they give him, the Lord our justice. Therefore the days will come, says the Lord, when they shall no longer say, As the Lord lives, who brought the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt, but rather, as the Lord lives, who brought the descendants of the house of Israel up from the land to the north, and from all the lands to which I banished them, they shall again live on their own land. The Word of the Lord Psalm 72 Justice shall flourish in His time, and fullness of peace forever. O God, with your judgment, and though the King, and with your justice, the King's Son, He shall govern your people with justice, and your afflicted ones with judgment. Justice shall flourish in his time and fullness of peace forever. For he shall rescue the poor when he cries out, and the afflicted when he has no one to help him. He shall have pity for the lowly and the poor. The lives of the poor he shall save. Justice shall flourish in his time and fullness of peace forever. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who alone does wondrous deeds, and blessed forever be his glorious name. May the whole earth be filled with his glory. Justice shall flourish in his time and fullness of peace forever. Gospel Antiphon O leader of the house of Israel, giver of the law to Moses on Sinai, come to rescue us with your mighty power. A proclamation from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. This is how the birth of Jesus Christ came about. When his mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found with child through the Holy Spirit. Joseph, her husband, since he was a righteous man, yet unwilling to expose her to shame, decided to divorce her quietly. Such was his intention when, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary, your wife, into your home, for it is through the Holy Spirit that this child has been conceived in her. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet, Behold, the virgin shall be with child and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. When Joseph awoke, he did as the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took his wife into his home. He had no relations with her until she bore a son, and he named him Jesus. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. How are you? How have we been so far preparing, at least spiritually, for the celebration of the birth of the Messiah? The first reading for today is from the book of the prophet Jeremiah, and he says, Behold, the days are coming, says the Lord, when I will raise up a righteous shoot to David, 
As king, he shall reign and govern wisely. He shall do what is just and right in the land. Governments and kingdoms in the past, and maybe even until the present moment, are oftentimes a disappointment to God because they are not really doing justice to the subjects. There is always corruption, there are injustices, the security are not um, given properly to the people. And so the promise, the promise that someone would come with the opposite characteristics, no? The someone who is righteous, should, he shall reign and govern wisely, and he shall do what is right and what is just. No, what is lacking in the governments, this shoot of David will, will do no, in his government. Of course, this prophecy is pointing to Jesus, our Lord, no? the very um, center of the celebration that is happening now no, in this season. And uh, yeah, of course, again, this first reading is fulfilled in our Lord Jesus Christ. And in the gospel, we are going to deal with uh, the people, specifically St. Joseph, who are touched by God in the fulfillment of his plan for the coming of the Messiah. You see, the Messiah did not simply come. No? It was actually a very complicated thing. And if we're going to put ourselves in the lives of those people who were around Jesus and Mary during those days, it is really with complications. No? And it is something that is not really easily understandable or acceptable. So, yun natatandaan natin that in the coming of Jesus, many, many people were touched by God. Invited by the Lord specifically so that they will be instrumental in the fulfillment of God's plan for the coming of Jesus. Jesus naman, hindi basta lang dumating na parang hangin na nandyan lang. No? He came through the process of humanity and therefore human beings were touched by God, by the Father, for them to participate in the fulfillment of this plan. Look at how much God really trusted people also, His creations. Today we focus on St. Joseph and in the course of these nine days, of Simbang Gabi, we will be presented with different personalities touched by God. And God said, thanks be to God that they said yes also and participated in the fulfillment of the plan of salvation. Today we speak of Joseph. He is in the center of today's gospel. The annunciation of the coming of the Lord to Joseph. That could be, we could look at that this way. Look at the context. Joseph and Mary are already betrothed to one another. Engaged na sila, no? And uh, during the time, with the law of Moses, those people, even if they are not yet living together, they are already considered husband and wife, no? And so that was the context. And then Joseph found that Mary was with child, not his own. Can you imagine that feeling, no? Uh, for us, it's easy to accept this. It is to the power of the Holy Spirit, and uh, it was told to us by the evangelist. And so, okay, then, then the emotions is not really so much in there. But for Joseph, who is the husband of Mary, and that is not his child, okay, as a man, I could understand what he would really do. No? And again, that is already adultery. And being righteous, he wanted to do what is right. No, what is right. He planned to divorce Mary, but to divorce Mary silently. Look at that. He, he, he loves Mary so much. And even though she cannot accept what happened to Mary at this point in time, according to her, his own judgment, he, he does not want to put Mary into shame. Aside also from the fact that adultery, during those days, a woman without a husband or, or adult, yeah, found with a child, that, that is a criminality that is punishable by death and death by stoning. Can you imagine Mother Mary to be stoned and with Jesus in the womb? Sometimes my imagination goes, what, what could have happened had uh, Joseph did not accept the invitation of the Lord and Mary was stoned according to the law and tradition of the land and, and um, uh, Mary was killed because of stoning and Jesus was in the womb. What could have happened? I, I, sometimes my imagination goes that way. But as I've said, jo Joseph was a product also of his own culture where um, honor and shame are playing very important role in the society. And so his decision is to divorce Mary, but quietly. That was his decision before the intervention of God. Now, before it happened, 
the angel appeared to him in a dream, telling him that this is this child is a fulfillment of the prophecy of the of the in the prophets, of course, yeah, and and that. Um, the, the child in the womb of Mary is conceived through the power of the Holy Spirit, no? in fulfillment of what was told specifically in the prophet Isaiah. And so, yeah, when he woke up, he took up Mary, bring to his home, and he became um, the foster father of, of the child. His function is to save um, and, and to protect the mother and the child, to accept him, the, the, the child, as his own, and to deliver them from shame, you know? And so he did that. He did that. He is going to name Jesus, he, the child Jesus. Isang trabaho ng tatay, di ba? Magbigay ng pangalan. And so that's one of his role. Jesus has no biological father, and so he will be the father who will be giving the name Jesus to the child. And so look at that. Look at that. Before the intervention of God, his plan is to divorce Mary silently, not to expose her to shame. But after the intervention of God, he said yes to God. You know? So he is a righteous man. We can learn from Joseph. He's a righteous man. And he loves Mary, doesn't put, want to put her into shame, even the, what happened to her, he cannot accept. Yung bang tipong, yeah, still, he, he cared for the honor and for the reputation of Mary. And I hope we can learn from this, that we also respect other people in our time now. Not to, to make fake news about the person just to destroy the person. Far from that. We learn from St. Joseph of how he respected people, specifically Mary. And second, he is sensitive to the, to the word of God. No, In a dream, he, he accepted it. No. He accepted that that is the word of God. He was sensitive to the word. And third, yeah, he did. What was the commandment of the Lord? Maybe in the initially against his own will, but dahil sinabi ng Diyos, but because God says so. And this is very important principle in our lives, brothers and sisters, that the will of God be done in us. Not our will, but the will of God. Dahil sinabi ng Diyos, because God says so, because God willed so, then I will obey and from this, this, this obedience, from this obedience of Joseph, we should literally learn. And look at that. His obedience uh, was able to, to fulfill the plan of God. And that plan in Jesus was, yeah, he became a savior, not only during his time, but even to us. And so we are recipients of the yes of Joseph. Because the, the, the Savior came into existence also partly because of him. No, had he said no, as I've said, had he said no, maybe uh, the plan of God would not be fulfilled and the, survey, the Savior would not come. Probably the Savior would come in another way. But the fact is, he came in this way with the yes of Joseph. Look at that. Obedience can make miracles. And... Uh, Again, something we can really learn from Joseph. Let's obey God. Let's obey God. And surely, miracles can happen into our lives to benefit us, but also other people. We were benefited from the yes of Joseph and many, many other more. And so that's the miracle happening if we are obedient to God. So let us be righteous, just like Joseph. Let us be sensitive to the word of God, to listen to the word of God, just like Joseph. Let us do the commandment of God. Let us do the will of God. That is very, very significant and uh, a determinant in so many things, a deciding factor. And, yeah, let us obey God, just like St. Joseph. St. Joseph, pray for us. He is the patron of the Universal Church. Pinagkatiwalaan ng Diyos si San Jose upang maging ama ni Jesus dito sa mundo. Sa tulong ng kanyang panalangin, dumulog tayo sa amang patuloy na kumakalinga sa atin. Panginoon, dinggin mo ang aming panalangin. Para kay Francisco na ating Santo Papa, kay Christoph na ating Obispo dito sa Vienna, mga pari at mga lalaking relihiyoso, masalaminawa ang dakilang pag-ibig ng Diyos sa pamamagitan ng kanilang makaamang pagkalinga. Manalangin tayo. Panginoon, dinggin mo ang aming panalangin. Para sa mga naglilingkod sa ating bayan, matularan nawa nila ang katapatan ni San Jose nang sa gayon magkaroon sila ng malasakit at paglingap sa kanilang mga nasasakupang pamayanan. Manalangin tayo. Panginoon, digin mo ang aming panalangin. 
para sa mga haligi ng tahanan, maipadawa, maipadamanawa nila ang pag-ibig at pag-aaruga sa kanilang mga pamilya sa pamamagitan ng kanilang pagsusumikap at suporta. Manalangin tayo. Panginoon, dinggin mo ang aming panalangin. Para sa mga may pinagdaraanan sa buhay, makatagpunawa sila ng pag-asa at pananampalataya sa pamamagitan ng halimbawa at gabay ni San Jose. Manalangin tayo. Panginoon, dinggin mo ang aming panalangin. Para sa mga yumao, makapasok na wa sila sa kaharian ng Ama, sa langit, manalangin tayo. Panginoon, dinggin mo ang aming panalangin. Sa katahimikan ng ating puso, itaas natin sa Panginoon ang ating mga pansariling kahilingan. O Diyos, tulungan mo kaming magkaisa bilang iisang mag-anak sa ilalim ng iyong pagkalinga. Turuan mo kaming matulad kay San Jose na siyang naging tapat at masunurin sa kanyang mga pangako sa iyo. Hinihiling namin ito sa pamamagitan ni Kristong aming Panginoon. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, holy be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Saint Joseph, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Marami pong salamat sa inyong pakikiisa sa ating pagninilay ngayong araw na ito. Saint Joseph was a man of few words. Even his, his appearance in the scripture is very, very little. But it made a lot of difference in the life of people. Magandang araw, magandang buhay sa inyo lahat. Ciao!